L-shaped oscillator. Two identical thin rods, each with mass M and length L, are joined at right angles to form an L-shaped object. This object is balanced on top of a sharp edge. If the L-shaped object is deflected slightly, it oscillates. Find the frequency of the oscillation. So you can see that we have the, the two uh, rods joining at 90 degrees and the center of mass will be due to symmetry right in the middle here. So uh, we will have a 45 degree, degree angle at one corner and 45 degree at the other one. And that therefore we have an isosceles triangle. So these lengths will be x, x and x. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle will be L over 2. So first of all we note that this is again a physical pendulum this is again a physical pendulum the moment of inertia for center of mass axis rotations was ml squared over 12 but for rotations about one end using the uh, parallel axis theorem we have ml squared over 12 plus ml squared over 4 which gives us ml squared over 3 so this is something we have done before so we have two rods therefore we have twice the contribution two times ml squared over 3 will be the total moment of inertia for rotations around uh, the corner axis so you can see the same thing we did in problem uh, 1473 the total mass of the two rods will be 2m and uh, the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass will be basically x here so we can calculate what x is using this uh, isosceles right triangle x squared plus x squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, which is L squared over 4. So we can see that x squared will be L squared divided by 8. So x is L divided by 2 square root 2. And for uh, the physical pendulum, we have found that omega is equal to uh, square root mgd over i so total mass m gravitational acceleration g distance between the center of mass and the pivot point d divided by the moment of inertia i square root so if i substitute for the uh, total mass m uh, 2m gravitational acceleration g for d i substitute l divided by 2 square root 2 and for moment of inertia i substitute 2 m l squared divided by 3 so i see that uh, two m's will uh, cancel one of the l's will disappear and this is inside the square root and this is going to become, because 3 will go upstairs, it will be 3g in the numerator. So it will be 3g divided by uh, 2 square root 2 L square root. And what I have to find is the frequency of the oscillation. Omega is 2 pi times frequency f so i can read the frequency of the oscillation small angle oscillation as 1 over 2 pi 3g divided by 2 square root 2 l square root okay 
This is yet another application of a physical pendulum. Now the physical pendulum consists of two identical rods, length L, mass M each. So this has mass M, this has mass M. And uh, because they're identical, the center of mass will be right in the middle here, uh, equidistant from the centers of the two rods. And uh, they are join they have a joint with a 90 degree angle so we can see because the center of mass should be in the uh, middle axis in the middle vertical axis uh, this distance x and this distance x will be the same because we have 45 45 and 90 degrees and we can find the distance x between the center of mass and the pivot point uh, p here this is our pivot point p uh, as L over 2 square root 2 using Pythagorean theorem. And since the angular frequency omega is square root total mass gravitational acceleration distance between center of mass and pivot point divided by moment of inertia, I need to check the moment of inertia of a uniform rod when it is rotated not about the center of mass axis but about an axis that goes through one of its ends. It is ml squared over 12 plus ml squared over 4 using parallel axis theorem that is ml squared over 3. I have two of them so it's 2 ml squared over 3. I substitute for capital M 2M, for I 2ML squared over 3, for D L divided by 2 square root 2. This gives me uh, omega and when I divide omega by 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi, square root 3G divided by 2 square root 2L will be the frequency of the oscillation.